Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my spring TBR. I picked out a few books that I really want to prioritize in the next couple of months and I just wanted to chat about them, share them with you guys, you know, that's kind of what we do around here. Before we get into it, I want to apologize for my um, appearance. I just got back from the gym and I decided I wanted to film a video at 8 p.m. because that's just what life is right now. So I'm sorry, I might look like a little sweaty and I'm literally in my workout clothes, but it's fine. I guess we're just filming a little casual video today and yeah, that's all for this intro. So let's go ahead and talk about all the books that I want to read in, I guess like April, May, and June and a little bit of March. I don't really know what you guys qualify as like spring, but it technically starts in March. So I guess just for the next few months. The first book of my TBR is one that I will be getting to very soon because of Ramathon, because it's blue, but that is The Witch Collector by Carissa Weeks. This is the first book in the Witch Walker series. I don't know if it's a duology. I do know there are two books out in this series, but I don't know if the second one is like the conclusion. I think it's called City of Ruins or something like that. Honestly, I'm not I'm not quite sure, but this one is an enemies to lovers fantasy romance book. I borrowed it from my library and it's blue, so I got to read it very, very soon. And that's why I thought it'd be perfect for this TBR, especially because I feel like spring and summer times, I start to get into more of a like romanticy mood rather than my normal like high epic fantasies. So you'll see quite a few like fantasy romances on this list, um, but that's just that's a vibe that I'm channeling for the next couple of months, okay? So there's someone called the Witch Collector that comes and collects people for the Frost King. Our main character, Reyna, essentially wants to kill the Frost King, and she meets someone along the way, and it's like a rivals to lovers story. I'm really not sure. The back is kind of vague, so I, I don't have a lot of knowledge going into this book, but I've heard pretty good things. I've heard it's like a just like really good, fun fantasy romance and that's exactly what I'm going for. It's also very short so we always love that. Um, it's not an 800 page chunker and I don't really know much else to say about this but yeah I, I want to read this book. Kind of going along the I don't know what this book is about and also it has a blue cover. We have Crown of Bones by A.K. Wilder. So I actually, I was book shopping the other day at Barnes & Noble and I stumbled across this book and I was going to buy it, but then I saw that they had it on KU. And also I looked at Goodreads and it only has like a thousand something reviews. So I was like, okay, I don't wanna buy the book if I don't, like I don't know anyone who has read it. Like personally, I don't know them. So I don't really have a lot to go off of. So I'm just I'm hoping that this is good. If it's good, I'll buy it. But for now, I'm going to read it on KU. The synopsis of it is very vague. Like, it's very short. So I'm just going to read it. It says, In a world on the brink of the next great dying, no amount of training can prepare us for what is to come. A young heir will rise, the most powerful phantom in all of Bicene. A dangerous high savant will do anything to control the nine realms. A mysterious and deadly Mar race will steal children into the sea. And a handsome guide with far too many secrets will make me fall in love. My name is Ash, a lowly scribe meant to observe and record, and yet I think I'm destined to surprise us all. So, I don't know, it's just... The synopsis, like, I feel like it's got some buzzwords that I want. It also says that it's for fans of epic fantasies and sweeping adventures, which we all know I love me an epic fantasy and a sweeping adventure. So it just, it sounds like something I would really, really enjoy. And I'm really trying to, like, actually actively seek out and, like, find books for myself. Like, I'm all for reading, like, popular books. Like, you guys will see a bunch on this list that you've definitely heard of. But I also want to try and, like, find my own like books you know like things that like aren't really being recommended on youtube and book talk and all that stuff and just yeah that's like one of my one of my little goals little goals that i've set for myself recently and i thought this book had potential plus like honestly <laughs> it was the cover the cover really got me but when i read the synopsis i was like okay i feel like i should give this book a chance so i definitely want to try it out um like during the springtime and hopefully sometime soon because it's blue and has an animal on the cover. I know I'm talking about Ramathon a lot, even though it's only for the month of March and not all of spring, but like that's kind of where my head is at right now. So 
I need to read this ASAP. Another KU fantasy romance I want to read is Empire of Dragons. I'm forgetting who wrote the book by Rachel L. Shade. This is the first book in the Cursed Empire series and I think the only person I know who's read it is Cassidy. But um it only has 476 ratings, which is kind of wild, and I marked it as want to read back in October, and I still haven't read it, which is kind of embarrassing, but I just saw that it was a YA fantasy romance, and it has dragons in it, and it just sounded like it would be up my alley, but um, I don't really know what this is about. Um... It says, save the empire or let it burn. Revenge failed her. Three years ago, Lolani... Nolanhu did the unthinkable, slaying the empress of the cruel Iranian Empire and freeing her people, the foreign slaves. But the prince of revenge wasn't freedom, only guilt. Vowing to never kill again, Lo dedicated her life to the god Ilani, saving, serving as a nun with the circle of serenity to fight against the injustices still wrought against her people in the torn capital of Ulrenor. Then Cassium, a handsome and mysterious Terranese boy, aligned with an underground four-wind vigilante group, flips her world upside down. The unrest growing with Al Alvernor is worse than low realized. Corruption is everywhere, and the four-wind vigilantes want to impress Slayer. And then it talks about, like, another POV with, like, a prisoner in the kingdom. And then there's also a POV of a young soldier. I don't know. It seems like there's a lot going on with this one. But it also sounds really, really good. Like, it... We have someone who is a nun, but is also part of a vigilante group. We have a prisoner trying to, like, escape or, like, do something. And then we have a soldier, and I love me a good, like, military moment in my fantasies. So, yeah, I think this is probably going to lean more towards fantasy than romancy. But the nun vigilante group thing, I think, is going to have, like, a little bit of a romance. Because I think the, like, guy recruits the nun. And then I think she's like, she's like training to be a nun during the day and then part of this vigilante group at night. And I don't know, it just seems like it's going to be a really, really fun time. And it's a four book series that are all on KU. So I think I might do like a reading vlog for this one and just like binge the entire series in a week or something and do a little review for you guys. I think that would be really, really fun. But again, trying to find more books that people have not read and just branching out. So pat on the back for me. But on the complete opposite scale of that, I also want to read Jade City by Fonda Lee. Now, has this book been on literally every single TBR I've probably ever posted on this channel? Yes, but I have a vlog scheduled for April where I read this book. Like, I'm reading the entire Green Bone Saga and I said that really weird, Green Bone Saga, and recording my entire experience, and I'm just so, so freaking excited because I didn't know these books were on KU. Like, how did I not know this? Because I have Jade City with me, um, like, at my apartment, but Jade War is back at my parents' house, so I won't have access to it until, like, July, and then I don't own Jade Legacy, and I'm on a book buying ban right now. So I really didn't think I was going to be able to like binge the series. Like I didn't want to start the series and then wait like 10 months before I pick up the next book, which is what I normally do. And I'm trying to cut that. So I didn't think I was going to pick this up anytime soon. But when I saw that they were all in KU, I was like, okay, now I have to binge the series. I just have to do it. And my library finally got the audiobook for Jade City. So I have that in my hands and I'm going to be picking it up in April. And I'm very, very, very excited. But this is like, I'm sure you guys know what Jade City is about, but we have Jade, gives you a lot of power and also like, like physical, actual like power and then also political power in this world. It's kind of like an urban fantasy vibe and I think there's like mafia families competing for power in the city. I've just heard that the character work is really, really good and I've recently discovered that I'm a very character driven reader. Like I didn't know that about myself until I think this past year. I think I'm finally learning what my like reading style is and just like what kind of a reader I am and I've realized I need I need really good characters and I've heard that this has that and I just I want my heart to be ripped to shreds so I decided I would binge the series. Next we have the conclusion to a very 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 incredible fantasy series and that is Wrath by John Gwynn. This is the fourth and final book in the Faithful and the Fallen Quartet and 
I've talked about Malice and Valor and Ruin on my channel so freaking much because they are so fantastic. Like if you are looking for a high epic fantasy that has so many like classic tropes but does them so well and it's not like John Gwynn is executing these tropes in a very like nuanced unique way like they're very it's very tropey like it's very very like fantasy classic fantasy tropes like prophecies chosen ones all of this stuff but it's just it's so bingeable like it's so much fun but at the same time it's like it's not fun at all like it's brutal it's heartbreaking it's just so it's such a journey it's such a ride and watching some of these characters grow like literally grow like we have um a young boy in the first book and we watch him literally grow up but also grow in the sense of like their politics and their their minds are growing their emotions are evolving and seeing their interactions with each other it's just it's so so masterfully done i have loved every single book in the series and i've been putting off reading the conclusion since i conclu since i finished ruin a few months ago because I'm so scared like I feel like this book is going to break my soul especially like the ending of Ruin literally destroyed me like I sat on the couch after finishing that book and just contemplated life because I didn't know what to do with myself and I'm I'm so scared that if the end of a book can do that I don't even want to know what the end of the series is gonna do for me but it's on my list because I need to, I need to get to it. It's just, it's very, very chunky. It's very, very floppy, but it's, it's a very chunky book. Like, I don't know how, I don't want to spoil myself. It's almost 700 pages, but the thing is, like, the font is relatively big, and I do have the audiobook. That gives me a little bit of hope. Oh, just, just a little bit. And then I also want to continue in my favorite middle grade series of all time, which is Keeper of the Lost Cities. We have a book five here, Lodestar. I might have to look up a summary of book four because it has been, I think, two years since I picked up book four. You guys, when I, when I say in my videos that I'm terrible at continuing series, like, it's no joke, you guys, okay? Like, two years? Are you kidding me? Like, what the heck? And these are, like, chunky middle grade books like I'm not gonna go back and reread books one and four just to continue on because it's been so long so I'm really really hoping I can find like a good summary of book four online if not I might just jump into it and be confused and hopefully start to slowly not be confused by the end I don't know but the first one is about our main character Sophie who discovers that she's an elf and she gets whisked away into the elvish world it has a school setting it's just it's so fun the characters are like the best part of this like the plot is incredible like the mysteries and the underlying themes the found family in this just like oh my gosh I I cannot stop gushing about this series if you haven't read Keeper of the Lost Cities and you are even like remotely like even a little bit interested in middle grade you need to read the series it's seriously so so fantastic and I know I'm not the only one hyping it up I know this is a very very popular middle grade series but like for a reason okay because it's just it's so so good and Sophie and Fitz and just the whole gang have my heart and I ooh. and then there's like there's some animal companions in here too well not like fully companions but like if you know you know and I just I love her so much and it's just oh it's so good it's so freaking good and then speaking of middle grade we also have hollow pox by Jessica Townsend this is the third book in the nevermore series and I think this is the last one that is out so far like the fourth one comes out later this year so i really want to get caught up on the series i recently read wondersmith and i really enjoyed it i thought it was a solid sequel to the first book but the first book is still my favorite so i'm excited to see how this one pans out also now that i'm looking at it another plug to realmathon but i could use this because half the cover is blue and it has an animal on it and it's a school setting so I could get so many bonus prompts for this. I'm just, that's, guys, I'm telling you, my mind is on Realmathon at 24-7 in the month of March, and I, I just can't, I can't turn it off. But the first one, we are following our main character, Morrigan Crow. She is essentially, like, blamed for everything bad that happens in her town, and she's supposed to die on her 11th birthday, but then she doesn't, and she gets whisked away to this school setting, and lots of stuff goes down there it's so so much fun and again there's like found family vibes but at this it's like less found family 
heavy than Keeper of the Lost Cities because Morgan is really struggling with connecting with the people at her school, but it's still like so much fun. There's trials in the first one to like get to the school and it's just, it's such a good time. And then the last book on this list is another one that you guys have seen plenty of times and that is Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. Now, I did start this book, okay? I started it on my Kindle, but I realized I really, really, really need the audiobook for this. And my audiobook loan is, it says I have like about two weeks. Like I think I'm the second in line. So that's why I wanted to put it on this TBR because I will 100% be getting to this book in the next couple of weeks. As soon as that audiobook loan comes in, I will be reading it on my Kindle and following along with the audio. I was just finding it hard to get into because it is such a chunky, like intimidating book. I just think I need the audiobook to trudge along the story. But this one, we are following a world where like the sun has been gone for years and so the vampires have essentially like taken over and i've heard that it portrays vampires very brutally and in their like most like terrible states it doesn't romanticize them at all like i mean i know we all love a little edward cullen and a little damon salvatore stefan salvatore moment but i also want to see like the brutal like the real true vampire lore that I feel like has just evolved into like hot sexy boyfriends you know like I, I want to see I want to see the scary like brutal vampires and I think that's what this book portrays them as and I'm very very excited for it so there you have it those are all of the books that I want to read in the next couple of months if you made it to the end of this video and you want to say hi you can leave me any kind of like spring emoji and also let me know what's a book that is on your spring TBR. But with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in another one very soon. Bye.